Hi everyone, this is Jackie Cooper. I'm with Crypto Mom. And uh, today we are going to be doing a, a short talk with an individual that I met on various social media platforms. And our topic of discussion today are NFTs. And if you're not familiar with an NFT, it's a non-fungible token. And NFTs are being used in a variety of ways to um, solve problems and also be very creative. Um, I know that I'm exploring NFTs because of the, um, the creativity you can use for art. And you can also, I've known different musicians that have also used it to um, record their songs on and share out. So there's a lot of different ways, but I'm new to this and I'm learning and I, um, my guest today is much more experienced than I am on this, so I want to say hello today, um, and I'm going to have you introduce yourself because I see your name online says Bruce the Goose, and so how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Uh, yeah, uh, on your, like, as far as an artist thing goes, like I go by Bruce the Goose, which was a spontaneous name choice, and that was written to the blockchain a thousand times, so I can't change it. <laughs> but uh i'm a crypto artist like as my full-time job for the most part and i've been doing it for almost two years now that's awesome and I'm also yeah yeah it's pretty great i uh, kind of like went all in on my first day <laughs> i'm also the founder of nfthub.com which is a lot of things but in short it's like a resource portal and directory and we're going to do a lot of educational content to make it easier to onboard that stuff is, like that. that that's that's really phenomenal i personally my background um i started off in law but and i've been an entrepreneur but i'm actually an educator i'm a special education teacher and i was standing in the hallway waiting for some of my kids to kind of um go to their next room and i kept thinking I've got to learn more about NFTs because I need to teach kids how to, because they're using technology anyway, how to understand what this digital art is and what this platform is, because they're the next generation of the of where this creativity is going. So um, two years ago, I did not know that NFTs were around two years ago. Um, when did they get started? Um, I believe the First NFTs were in 2014. Wow. On the counterparty platform, which was a fork of Bitcoin. I believe it was a rare Pepe's, like just meme trading cards, basically. And um, a lot of people see CryptoPunks as the first NFTs on Ethereum, and they were 2017. But there was actually a project launched in 2015 that never really got traction and just kind of like went dark because NFTs weren't really a thing then. Yeah. Recently, it resurfaced. Like the developer was like, "I'd just like to point out that CryptoPunks are not the first NFTs." <laughs> so, how did you learn about this two years ago? What were you doing, beef? If I can ask, what were you doing before two years ago? Uh, so I've pretty much worked just about every dead end job you can think of, and at the time when I was getting into NF or when I got into NFTs, I was already out of a job shortly before the pandemic, and. I don't have a car and like live out in the country. So like job options were few and far between. And I was looking into doing uh, drop shipping. Yeah. And to make a long story short on that, I was looking into Bitcoin as a payment option alternative yeah. to credit card processors that wanted a ton of fees and stuff like that. And like before NFTs, I before then I had no real interest in crypto. I was aware of it, but like didn't pay any attention, didn't have money to invest really. So I figured just, no sense in uh, learning about it really. So I was looking into Bitcoin as a payment option and I stumbled onto an article by Engine, who I'm familiar with because I've been a gamer for most of my life. Uh, they're largely responsible for Minecraft being the online sensation that it is. And they're talking about the Engine coin. And I'm like, what, what does Engine need cryptocurrency for? Like, and why wouldn't they just use Bitcoin? Why, why do they need their own coin? And so I was reading the article and they were talking about like actually owning your game items and taking them to other games with you and it's selling them on third party markets and stuff like that. And it's like, this, that kind of changes everything. It does. Like, it does. As someone who spent thousands of hours and dollars on video games that I have nothing to show for at this point because I don't play those games anymore. Like it was a real aha moment. And then I started looking a little further into that and I came across the uh, first release by the async art platform which does prog programmable artwork 
that can like respond to real world data and stuff like that and update on its own. Uh, the possibilities are wild with that, but their first release was a collaboration between, I think, 22 artists. And it's 22 separate layers that are owned separately by different individuals who can update the different. So each layer has three or four states that can be changed and only one reflects on what they call the master, which is the full work. And like that absolutely just blew my mind and I stumbled down the rabbit hole and I haven't looked back since. <laughs> I understand what you mean about the rabbit hole. I mean, you know, it's like I started um, my crypto journey last June with uh, investing in um, an altcoin that I'm still involved with and as a business. And um, and then I stumbled on the NFT because I'm trying to help my aunt who's 75. I want to create alternative income for her. And, um, you know, I'm just, I've always been fascinated with technology. And when I learn more about the blockchain and the NFTs and everything that you could possibly do with it, it's, it, it is endless. And it's, a, you know, for me, I totally respect you and what you're doing because there is a lot of creativity. Um, it, you know, there is some simplicity in this, but there's also creativity. And um, I, I know as soon as my school is out in June, I'm going to be just like you diving deep in because I want to take the next three months to really learn more about it. So I'm, I know that we, uh, I've joined a lot of different groups so I could learn more. Um, your group seems to be really special. Who are the people that are in your Facebook group and other things that you're developing? Um, I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups at this point. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I very rarely use Facebook though. Uh, like, um, Twitter is a lot of, no I couldn't tell you like people individually. Um, the small team I have is myself and uh, on Twitter and as an artist, he goes by Bitlord Classic. And then uh, who else do we have right now? Um, we just recently hired a social media manager, but like she's very new to crypto. <laughs> she has experience as a social media manager, but like no experience in crypto. So I don't know how she found my tweet about it, but she did. <laughs> It's like, well, you better learn because you're getting paid in crypto. So, like, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, to, I gave her a first check a week or so ago and like I had to walk her through setting up a wallet and all this. I'm like, right, well, I'm going to give you stable coins because that at least like it's a dollar value, like right off the bat. That's awesome. So um, I have actually uh, an individual popping on who um, actually is uh, introduced me into the crypto side. Um, so Yvette, I see that you um, have not shown yourself, which is fine. I just want to introduce yourself to Bruce the Goose. He's actually um, a creator in the NFT space. And so we're talking right now about NFTs. Um, so Bruce, tell me more about what your vision is for, uh, you talked about the educational side and the platform. What's your vision down the road? Uh, the real vision is just like to make it easier and like more efficient to learn and navigate the NFT space for creators and even collectors and people just, I feel like, um, so like two years ago when I got into it, I had never done anything with crypto and like going to crypto from NFTs or well, you have to go through crypto first. Like it was a very steep learning curve. Yes. And like, I yeah. probably would have, I probably lost a fair bit of money just like in losing wallets and like testing different wallets and finding stuff that worked and stuff that didn't. And I didn't really have anybody to reach out to for help because mostly because I'm like not a very social person, but also because I was under the impression that crypto was a bunch of moon boys and like, <laughs> and Silicon Valley tech people and stuff. So like, I didn't really feel like anybody was probably gonna be approachable about it. And especially this year, like since January, I think the transaction volume in NFTs has like gone up by like 500% or something like that. And so a lot of people are coming into the crypto landscape through NFTs and there's a lot of stuff you have to watch out for. There's a lot of bad actors trying to take your money from you. And like, there's not an easy like onboarding process at all that I've seen. I think you're right. I it's know that. Much, just the deep end. 
Yeah, um, I have uh, been learning about um, different platforms like OpenSea and Nifty and um, I want to say Mint, I, um, Minty, uh, uh, Mintable rather, others, others too. And some of them are easy to navigate, some of them are not, but you're right, there's, the, you definitely have to understand both um, the wallets and crypto. And I know that Yvette's been helping me on different things I've been learning. Um, so you definitely have to, um, you know, kind of um, take your time in learning and then also, you um, approach people and that's why I approached you because again everyone has their own background and um, skill set and so um, you know you've been very helpful other people have have you know reached out and said you know think about doing this think about doing that so have you found that the community has opened up more and more people are are sharing their their knowledge yeah, the community is really what drew me in like the technology and the possibilities were really interesting, but the, um, it's a blogging platform called Scent, where you can like tip people with Ethereum and like offer like small bounties for like the best response to your post or whatever. And uh, like I posted just some random, not very good art there. And like people were incredibly welcoming and really supportive. And it's like, I've never experienced that on the internet. Like I've been, and then again, I've also been, most of my internet is competitive video games where people are not friendly to each other. But like, I still think that the NFT community is unlike anything you'll find anywhere else. Like people are very supportive and encouraging and welcoming. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Um, so for anyone who um, is new to the NFT world, um, any takeaways that you would like to share with them? Um, uh, you know, just, um, you know, maybe two or three points that you want them to know so that way they can begin their journey and not feel so frustrated and the learning curve? Uh, yeah. First thing I'll say is nobody's going to give you free Bitcoin. That is a scam 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> there is no free Bitcoins ever, I promise. But uh, I'm like, don't get discouraged. Like, there's a lot of people in the space and a lot of like people that are way better at marketing than artists. <laughs> Because a lot of artists don't want to market, but like you kind of have to. There's not a lot of curation in the space currently. Well, like just and then uh, never take yourself too seriously is some of the best advice I've ever gotten. Like <laughs> the minute it becomes the minute it stops being fun is when it becomes work, and nobody likes their work. Oh, so, like and like most people in the space are a lot more approachable than they appear. Very true. Now, I know for those that are not familiar with podcasts or YouTubes, there will be a block below the podcast and the YouTube. And I will have um, contact information that Bruce will be sharing with me. So that way, if you want to reach out, um, I know he's developing different things. Um, so the, the links will be there. That way you can um, also check it out. I don't know, Bruce, do you have a link that you wanted to share on the podcast right now. Otherwise, we'll um, put it in the block below. Uh, yeah, nfthub.com. It's uh, still in development, but like I've been building it publicly since March. I put eight to 10 months into it before that, but I'm a no coder, so it goes a little bit slowly. <laughs> totally. <laughs> There's understand. not a lot of that educational content and stuff mm -hmm. just yet, but like it's coming together pretty quick. And that's like we are, um, so that's nfthub.com and that has uh, links to our Discord and our Telegram. And like we're in there all day, every day. So we're available if people have questions or comments or concerns. That's great. So everyone, uh, definitely that information will be in the block below. And you can also reach me as well. And I'll have my contact information. Um, the, uh, the, the best email for me is jcoopertravels at gmail.com. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to mention that will definitely be in the block below, um, and Bruce, I'm not sure if you know about this, but I created a, a five minute uh, crypto information wallet organizer that makes it super easy to put all the information that you need when you're creating a new wallet, including your keywords and your, you know, all the various uh, private information. Definitely it's something you can print off and keep, um, you know, in a safe place offline. Uh, but I know that many individuals who are getting involved, they don't think about this, but if there was an emergency and a family member needs to know how to, um, you know, access the wallet, uh, because that's where we're keeping our, our 
funds in our currency now. Um, this is a way that someone else can, uh, within with your permission, can access it. So that way it just doesn't sit, sit there for an eternity and no one has access to it. <laughs> so anyway, Bruce, thank you so much for being on. Uh, Vet, thank you so much for hopping on. Uh, Bruce, do you have any last minute thoughts or questions that you want to share? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time and um, I know that we'll be connecting soon. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if you want to, I'm uh, at X Bruce the Goose on Twitter. Uh, that's probably the best place to reach me if you ever want to get in touch. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Give me a quick second. Thank you.